Hey guys, how's everyone? Um, plenty of people have contacted me regarding having a content-based study guide that can help them pass their NCLEX exam. Of course, I won't be able to go over all of these review contents in just one video or within this video or post, but instead I will try to go over the cardiac system first and then go over the major diseases that you will most likely encounter in your NCLEX. So basically, I'm going to go through the essential information that you need to know for the NCLEX. Now, as I have mentioned before on a previous video, <coughs> excuse me, or post, I have went over what I call the Big Mac or the Big MAC, which basically goes over the three biggest main cardiac diseases that you will most likely encounter in the NCLEX. And that would include the myocardial infarction for M, angina for A, <coughs> and congestive heart failure for C. Now, I will also go over a few other um, diseases that um, you will you can encounter in the NCLEX, and that would include topics related to hypertension, pericarditis, and cardiomyopathy. Okay, now now let's have a quick overview of the heart. Let's look at the quick anatomy of the heart as we learned from nursing school. Right, the cardiac muscle is composed of begins with the myocardium, the endocardium, and the pericard pericardium. <coughs> so let's first look at the myocardial infarction and the important thing that we need to know to prepare for the NCLEX is that we all know that myocardial infarction is indeed death right of the myocardial muscle cells and this is due to the lack of oxygen from inadequate perfusion within the body now assessment major assessment that we need to know for the NCLEX in relation to myocardial infarction or MI <coughs> is that MI usually lasts longer than 30 minutes and it is unrelieved by rest or nitroglycerin right therefore that's how we can dif differentiate um, angina from MI through the use of nitroglycerin now let's look at the diagnostic test results for MI which is essential to know for the NCLEX exam the EKG would show the EKG in a patient with an MI would show <coughs> An enlarged Q wave. So there would be an enlarged Q wave and there would be either an elevated or a depressed ST segment and then the T wave would be inverted which, we, which is what we call a T wave inversion. Okay so it would be <clears throat> again an enlarged Q wave, an elevated or a depressed ST segment and a T wave inversion and you really have to know that. Okay now in regard to drug therapy for a uh, patients with myocardial infarction, um, it's usually quite very similar to the drugs used for treating hypertension, which means medication can include your ACE inhibitors, such as um, catapin and uh, enalapril, which is base attack. <coughs> we also have our beta, black, beta blockers and our calcium uh, channel bl blockers. Now, as we all know, with ACE inhibitors, and you really have to know this and understand this, that the ACE inhibitors, basically, it blocks the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, right? And it basically uh, alters the blood pressure mechanism through what we call the renin-angiotensin system, okay? Now, medications usually have, um, would end in pril, right? Catapril, enalapril, ramipril, and the side effects for uh, ACE inhibitors can include coughing, right, tachycardia, and nausea and vomiting. Now, what we need to make sure is that we give, we give, um, we tell the patient that we give this on an empty stomach or two or three hours after a meal, right, for this medication to be really effective. Now, let's look at the next set of medication, which is the beta blockers, which basically just reduces the cardiac output and decreases the what we call sympathetic nervous system response, right? So basically, it, uh, it blocks the beta receptor, causing the decrease in blood pressure. And the medications um, in this category usually ends in alols, right? Metropolol, your propanolol, acibutolol, your nadolol, right? Now let's look at the adverse reaction that we can see in our patients. The patients can have side effects of bradycardia and hypotension, right? And we also need to watch out for this um, adverse reaction of hypoglycemia. We need to make sure we need to really be aware of that since beta blockers actually disrupt the liver's ability to convert glycogen to glucose. Therefore, we need to be mindful of that. Now, lastly, let's look at calcium channel blockers, which basically prevents the, the movement mechanism of the calcium within the cardiac system. And what it basically does is it basically decreases the cardiac workload and the cardiac 
muscle contractility okay now the medications would usually end in depine right such as amlopidine which is norvasac and ifedipine now let's go ahead and continue and look at a in our big mac of uh, essential cardiac diseases that we need to know for the NCLEX now a stands for angina pectoris now it's basically pain caused by inadequate blood flow to the blood vessels of the heart and basically our poor patient would usually describe the pain as a squeezing heavy discomfort pressure right so again pain is the number one symptom for a patient with angina pectoris and it's basically a substor substernal pain that can radiate to the neck the jaw and the back now compared to mi or myocardial infarction the pain from angina may be relieved by rest okay compared to our patient with a myocardial infarction now risk factors or causes for angina usually uh, is due to the fact of uh, the patient has previous atherosclerosis the patient can have hypertension or uh, diabetes mellitus now there are different types of angina but we really don't have to know the specifics for each one it's just important that we understand each type now there is the stable angina there's the uh, there's also the variant or what we call the prince metal angina and lastly is the silent angina now the stable angina it basically uh, it occurs it occurs with exertion and it's relieved by rest um, and it doesn't increase in frequency or severity on the other hand um, variant or prince metal angina usually increases in severity especially with exertion now the third one the silent angina is usually asymptomatic which means that we don't really see much symptoms now the EKG in our patient will show an ST segment depression and the T wave would be inverted which which is called a T wave inversion usually during the anginal pain when the patient is having the pain so again the EKG will show an ST segment depression in a T wave inversion so the main medication for our patient with angina is usually nitroglycerin in which the patient can take up to three tablets five minutes apart and if still no relief happens then we tell the patient to uh, to go to the hospital right and uh, we need to make sure we need to be mindful that we hold any nitrates if the blood pressure is less than 90 milligrams of mercury okay now what we tell our patient is that we tell our patient to place the nitroglycerin tablet under the tongue and we let it kind of melt right and we don't give the patient any fluid while while taking the tablet right so no fluid with the tablet and we make sure that we store the tablets in a dark bottle because light uh, lessens its efficiency thank you so much for listening and i will go over more of the cardiac system in part two of this video so don't forget to study hard good luck in your NCLEX and don't forget to visit all nursingnotes.com that's all nursingnotes.com again thank you so much good luck and god bless bye bye